welcome to the stage, Chris Schlichting. so weird to just come up here and just start telling jokes so I say hello I'll say hello to you guys but I won't ask you how you're doing it's not that I don't care I just had a bad experience once I, I got on stage and I was like how's everybody doing ah. it was like going nuts but somebody in the front real audible is like not good <laughs> yeah I didn't know what to do because I'm a comedian but I'm also like a nice person so I'm like, what's wrong, sir? What's wrong? He's like, oh, I just got a text. I just found out my grandpa passed away. That's what he said out loud at the comedy show. But luckily, I'm a professional, so I was like, well, <laughs> you really shouldn't be on your phone at a show, sir. It's kind of a rule. They should have went over some of the rules. <laughs> So we're gonna have some fun tonight, but before we get started, uh, I'm having sort of a little bit of an issue. I got a phone call earlier this week, and I didn't recognize the number, and they left a message, and I've been trying to figure out what this message is, and I was hoping I could play this for you, and we could kind of figure it out, and then we could kind of move on, because if I don't play this, and we try to figure this out, I can't concentrate, okay? So this is the voicemail that I got left, and you guys help me try to figure out what is going on. All right, listen up. Hold on, there's more. <laughs> like, that's a butt dial, right? That's gotta be... It's clearly a butt dial, right? <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I'm recording my first album. And a lot of times, when comics record an album, they don't, like, don't mention it. They're like, yeah, just another album. Hey, I got another one. Got another one in my belt buckle. <laughs> But I've never done one, so this is exciting. Yay, come on, fire yeah. up! Yeah. And like, if you don't think a joke is funny, don't laugh. They told me they can edit in laughter later, so <laughs> just be yourselves, okay? Just be yourselves. <laughs> I'm excited, uh, I'm excited for this opportunity. I'm excited to be here, but of course, I keep getting these like little things that keep popping up. Like yesterday, I found out that one of my childhood classmates passed away. I found out via social media, like Facebook. And for the last two days, I've kind of felt like I had something to do with it. Like, hold on, <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. His name was Philip, and when I was in the first grade, I had a birthday party, and after they got done singing happy birthday to me, because it was my birthday, I said that right, uh, Philip, he blew up my candles. Yeah, kind of funny, right? But not at the time. It was devastating. It was the worst experience of my life. I was crying. And my mom, she was trying to console me. She's like, it's okay. It's okay. We'll just do it again. We'll just start over. So my mom lit the candles. I made my wish. I blew them out. And I found out yesterday it came true. It just took a little bit of time. You guys laugh, but I'm kind of freaking out. <laughs> like, I keep thinking detectives are gonna show up to my door. Did you have a Ninja Turtle-themed birthday party in the first grade? Oh, I did. <laughs> What's the statute of limitations for wishes? <laughs> I love the turtles. I was a big fan of the Ninja Turtles. I always think it was funny, though, because now I'm an adult and I see things differently. But I always think it's funny that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they wore masks. <laughs> Let me say that again for some of the people in the back. Uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they wore masks to disguise their identity, right? Can't have anybody identifying that crucial inch eye part, right? I just like to envision like a reporter interviewing somebody that got like mugged and he's talking about the situation. He's like, oh, Oh yeah, he held me up at gunpoint. I was so scared. But then there was four of them that came out of the sewer. And what do they look like? <laughs> well, I don't know, they had masks on. Uh, if this helps your investigation, they were green. They carried their homes 
on their backs. Think like a turtle, but like a bigger... All right. <laughs> Big fan of the Ninja Turtles. I, I love the fall. I love that we're getting into the fall. And I'm okay with the summer. But the big thing I hate about the summer is the bugs. The bugs are always bad, right? They're always bad. Like, do you remember summer where they were good? <laughs> like, helped you carrying groceries? No, they're always bad. And my least favorite bug is the mosquito, of course, because it doesn't contribute. Like, other bugs do things. Like, spiders, they control the insect population. And then bees, we all know they make honey, but that's not it. They do other things. Like, they help with, like, crops. Like, they help flowers have sex with other flowers. I didn't read the article, but they, they take the piston and they rub it on their, the stigmata. You know what I mean. It's not a science lesson, okay? You know what I mean. But mosquitoes, they take our blood, and it's such a violation. I did Google that. We need our blood, right? And you can spray them. You can smack them too quick. I like to send a message. So feel free to start doing this yourselves, guys. What I'll do is I'll let a mosquito bite me, and then I let him leave. What I do next is I follow him home. I find out where he lives. And then I hide in his yard, and I wait patiently. Because eventually he'll need to leave. He needs to feed again, right? And then when he leaves, what I do is I go into his home, and I murder his wife and kids. <laughs> And then with the blood, it's our blood, I write on the wall, who sucks now? <laughs> yeah, I told that joke once, that's a joke, by the way. I, uh, like, how does he fit in the house? He's too big. It was a joke. Uh, I don't get in their house. <laughs> I told that joke once and uh, somebody in the crowd was like, oh, actually, it's the female mosquito that sucks blood. You said it was a husband. That's not scientifically accurate. Like the nerdiest heckler I've ever had in my life. And I don't like heckling. I don't like to deal with it. Uh, so I just ignored him. I finished my set, got my standing ovation, whatever. And then after the show, I actually saw this guy. He was at the bar area. And I didn't approach him or anything. What I did was I followed him home. <laughs> Uh, I just turned 40, and uh, this is kind of weird. Like, I'm noticing some things. Like, I'm noticing I'm getting this, like, dad rage. Like, out of nowhere. You know what I'm talking Like, you just get, you get so mad about the littlest things. Like, let me share this story with you. Uh, my wife, my kids, my grandma, we all went to this Japanese restaurant called Osaka. It's like a Benihana. They make the food right in front of you. It's like a really cool, like, spectacle. But there's a portion of the show where the guy fries up an egg, and he cuts it up into, I'm not kidding. He cuts it up into small pieces, and he takes turns flinging it in everyone's mouth, right? So my kids catch it, my wife, catch, my, my grandma, who's legally blind, she catches it. And then it gets to me, I'm like, okay, I guess I'll do this. I was raised with manners, this is highly inappropriate, right? And he flung it, and I'm not trying to be like a bad sport, but it was a bad, it was a bad fling. It was, he sailed it on me, right? And you look stupid. You're like, I, 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 and everyone's laughing, having a good time, right? He's like, you try again, you try again. Didn't even count down. Flings it, hits me in my chest. Like I'm sitting down, like, how, and everyone's having, uh, everyone's having so much fun, but now my birthday's ruined. <laughs> This guy's like messing with me. He's like, oh, what's wrong, baby bird? You look like baby bird trying to eat egg. I'm like, what did you call me? Like the whole dinner, he's being inappropriate. He's like flirting with my wife. He's like, oh, me put wasabi on your boobs. I'm like, is anybody listening to this guy? So I'm mad. My, I, my birthday's ruined, I'm pouting the whole time. Finally, I nudge my wife. I'm like, I'm gonna talk to this guy's manager. She made a good point. She's like, what are you going to say? I was like, he called me a bird and I'm a man. I have arms. So she made me realize that was stupid, right? So we toughed out dinner. And as we're leaving, I turned back to look at my arch enemy one more time, right? 
and I swear to you, he does this little like, like little flap. I swear, he does this little flap of the of his hands like at his side, and that's why I blacked out. I don't remember what happened. I just know I'm not allowed in Osaka anymore. My wife told me I took a koi fish from the pond. I was like, you're gonna treat me like a bird? I'm gonna act like a bird. I started to eat, it was... It's crazy. This is kinda, this kinda shows my age too. So I have a, a smartphone and I just recently came into the emojis. You know what I'm Like the emojis, it's like six or seven sheets of them. Like I've heard of them, but I never dabbled. But now I love them. There's like everything, there's, there's poop. There's a smiling piece of poop. And I can justify all of them. They all make sense. But there's one that drives me crazy. It's a girl. I don't know if you guys, it's a girl and she's doing this. Like she's got her arms at an X in front of her. You know that common, <laughs> that common gesture that most women do, right? This can't be good. <laughs> but it just drives me nuts. And this is how bad, I have really bad insomnia and I stay up and I think I'm worried about this girl. Like, <laughs> Because emojis, it's a Japanese-based company, and this is how bad my insomnia is and my racing thoughts. I keep thinking there's like a girl in a factory that makes the emojis, but she's being abused, and she's being like enslaved. So she's trying to send out like a Da Vinci code. <laughs> like, Chris in Iowa, please help me. <laughs> please help me, you will figure this out. And I'm like, Chris, you need to go to bed. Just Google it. Google it, you big dummy. So I Googled, Emoji girl with arms at an X, right? And as soon as I hit enter or search, my phone rang. <laughs> and I was like, hello? And all the voice said was, getting too close, baby bird. It's the same guy. <laughs> It's the same guy. <laughs> so I've also noticed this uh, as I've gotten older, and I've noticed that I've also appreciated that I'm not alone, that the mental health sort of struggles as you get older. So it's really important that you take care of yourself, uh, the mental health, the physical health, but the mental health is just wild. Um, I had a crazy incident. This is how I know it's pretty common now. I went to my doctor, and I was like, Doc, I feel sad all the time. And he was like, me too. I'm like, what? What does that mean? <laughs> he started crying. I took his blood pressure. It was weird. I didn't... So he suggested that I should maybe talk to someone, like see a therapist. So I'm not too ashamed to admit that I went and saw a therapist. So I met with this lady, and she instantly diagnosed me with mommy issues. And I was like, look, doctor, if you want me to share things that are bothering me, like I do with my mom, I have to sit on your lap, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> Physical health too, you gotta, you gotta take care of your body. So I'm trying to like, my diet's all over the place. Uh, you know, binge eating, like just the eating is out of control. Like I had a cupcake recently with two wrappers on the bottom, two. And I was like, ooh, someone's playing hard to get. <laughs> like when you're flirting with your food, maybe it's time to. This is another bad habit I have. Uh, I can't sleep, so what I'll do, out of sheer boredom, I will eat bowls of cereal. Like four or five bowls of cereal. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, like all my kids' sugary Lucky Charms, right? Like it's a real issue, it's a real problem. It's a, seri it's a serious cereal problem. I, know, I don't know why I'm, sh it's, a sur it's surreal that I'm sharing this. It's a surreal, serious cereal problem. It's also selfish, because now my kids have nothing to eat. It's a selfish, surreal, serious cereal problem. It's also a sin, I grew up Catholic, it's gluttony. It's a sinful, selfish, surreal, serious cereal problem. It used to have it like once a month, but now it's like every other day. It's, it's become cereal. It's a cereal, <laughs> sinful, selfish, surreal, serious cereal problem. Like there's not a joke there, by the way. Like the fact that you guys are laughing is neat. It's like serendipitous almost. Like it's a serendipitous, cynical, cereal, sinful, selfish, surreal, serious cereal problem. Boom. Take out the boom. I'll be honest with you, I, that was, I don't have a cereal problem, but my sister does. It's my sister's <laughs> cynical cereal. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get in shape. I'm trying to, 
work out. Jogging's good for you, right? Jogging's good for you. I read an article about how jogging is good for you. So I went for a jog recently. I felt pretty good about myself. I wasn't breaking any records, but I was, I was running, right? And a group of teenagers, they drove by me, and they rode down the window, and they're like, hey, you're fat. <laughs> but then they immediately stopped at a red light. So I actually, like, jogged up, like, sashayed up next to them. <laughs> because I'm not a very good jogger. <laughs> and I was like, I know. That's why I'm jogging. <laughs> and they were like, keep up the good work. It was like a weird exchange. I'm like, are we friends? They gave me a ride home. <laughs> Usually when I jog, and you guys can use this, it works for me, but whenever I do jog, I like to jog in cemeteries. Yeah, because that makes me feel like I'm in better shape than everyone else around me. Sure, I'm huffing and puffing, but I'm not decomposing, right? Just sashaying through the cemetery, right? <laughs> my brother, my little brother, Tommy, he's a big lifter. He's like, oh, you want to you lose weight? You got to lift. You burn more calories when you lift. <laughs> I was like, why are you talking like that? <laughs> he's like, because I lift, because I lift. <laughs> So I went to the gym and I did the squat. You, you, you look like you lift. So squat is where you put the bar on your back, right? And you, you use your whole body. Not just, you, you get your ham bones cooking. It's, I, you go lower than this, but I didn't stretch, ma'am, okay? You go low, <laughs> you get parallel to the ground, right? Total workout. So I squatted, racked it, felt pretty good about myself, right? And then somebody came right next to me. They put the same amount of weight on their bar that, that I had on my bar using my ham bones, my total body, right? And then they proceeded to just, like, just like lift it with their arms. I'm like, really? You can't scoot over? You can't wait till I'm done? I just thought it was really rude of her that she'd come right next to me and do her workout. It's not a competition. I actually played a lot of sports growing up. Uh, you name it, I did a basketball, football, soccer, hockey, tennis, golf, track and field. I did karate, I boxed, I fished, I hunted, I did it all, people. And then my Nintendo broke. <laughs> all right, jeez. Kind of an old crowd. <laughs> Might have to dig into my hula hoop material. <laughs> or maybe that metal wheel with that stick. <laughs> remember that? Remember that thing, sir? You remember that? Uh, <laughs> I did play, I did play some, I played Little League Baseball, right? And I don't know how it works where you guys are from, but where I was from, teams are named after whoever sponsors you, right? So we play against teams like Taco Bell, Pizza Hut. But this is true, my team, I played for Rungi Mortuary and Crematorium. <laughs> yeah, nobody smiled in our team photo. Our uniforms are little black suits, little neckties, right? <laughs> I always thought it was weird when the coach would tell us to look alive out there. <laughs> Is that advertising? <laughs> I actually thought my sport was soccer. I know it's not really America's pastime, but I was pretty good at soccer. I played in this league when I was younger and I dominated. On average, I would score about nine to 10 goals a game. In soccer, that's incredible. That's next level type stuff. I'm not gonna lie though, there was a lot of controversy. I was actually kicked out of the league because they didn't have a mental or physical handicap. And as it turns out, that was one of the stipulations. You had to be diagnosed with a mental or physical handicap. All right, relax, jeez. Before you guys turn on me, know this. I can actually tell that story because it's true. When I was in the third grade, my mom, she took me to soccer signups and she didn't know any better. She accidentally checked the wrong box on the application form. So for a month, I played on a junior Special Olympic soccer team. <laughs> You're not listening. <laughs> For a month, <laughs> nobody was suspicious. They're like, he looks like he belongs. <laughs> and he acts like he belongs. That kid is good. Was that a windmill kick? <laughs> I thought you ate the orange peels. I thought everyone else was eating the orange peels. I thought that's how you ate orange peels. <laughs> oh, man. So I, uh, I just don't do comedy 
Uh, I'm a teacher. Well, I was a teacher. This is going pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna put my two weeks in. I don't know how you quit, but uh, <laughs> I'm a teacher. I teach high school, and kids are different. I know that's cliche, but kids are different. Like I was a goody goody. Like I was a nice. I was a gentleman, right? But I think even the goody goodies, we felt what it was like to be bad, and I hated it. But let me explain. It was a miscommunication. Here's what happened. I had a crush on a girl. <clears throat> And this was before texting. So what you would do is you'd write him a note. So I wrote this girl a note, and all it said was, hey, sweetie. <laughs> That's all it said. Plenty more of that came from. Just lay the groundwork, all right? Lay the groundwork. And I'll never forget this. She opened the note, and she instantly started crying. I'm like, oh, that's not. I didn't, I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> and then she ran out of the room. You know that feeling where you did something wrong, where you're not sure what you did? Sure enough, I get called down to the principal's office. He shuts the door. He's like, Chris. Why'd you call Colleen sweaty? <laughs> so now I have a dilemma. What do you do? I can't let this guy know I can't spell. I'm a sophomore in high school. <laughs> so I have no choice. I'm like, well, <laughs> Colleen sweats a lot. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Two weeks attention, but no special ed. <laughs> Funny side note to that story, that girl, we ended up getting married. So, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but wouldn't that be a great way to end that joke? <laughs> I don't know who she is, hopefully staying hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I hate about teaching in high school is the PDA, the public display of affection. Oh, it's disgusting. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but this is a place of learning, not yearning. <laughs> students holding hands, making out in the hallways. I'll have boyfriends drop their girlfriends off to my class, and it's like the most dramatic scene ever. It's like a, it's like a scene from Last of the Mohicans. <laughs> like, I will find you! No matter how long, no matter how far, I will find you! You stay alive! <laughs> Then he jumps to a waterfall. <laughs> like, I had a girlfriend in high school. We didn't do that PDA stuff. We didn't have to establish our love. We were very distant. She didn't have to know my name. There was even four years while I dated another guy. That's how distant. <laughs> <laughs> had to let her go. She sweat too much. <laughs> The kids, I don't, the kids are different. I teach in an alternative high school. It's unique. I'm already off to a really great, great start this year. We had our first week of school already. And uh, the principal pulled me aside before the kids got there and told me that I would have a student in my class that identified as a cat. <laughs> have you heard of this? And I'm a very accepting person, but the cat thing is like, whoa, we're really pushing it. You know what I mean? It's just insane to me. So I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, whatever you need me to do. He's like, just kind of play along. You know, she's had some trauma, and I'm like, okay. So I didn't show up all last week. I didn't show up at all. And then my principal called me. He's like, why aren't you here? I'm like, well, I'm allergic to cats, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to do. You said to play along. But you said, you said. I caught, a, I caught a kid in my class last year, this is true. I caught a kid in my class looking at pornography on his phone, right there in my class. I was like, buddy, you can't do that. What website is that for documentation? <laughs> I, gotta doc I have to document. No, I have to document. <laughs> but it's also crazy to me that porn is just so readily available, like you can look it up on your phone. We didn't have that when I was in high school. All we had was turning our calculators upside down so it said boobies. That's all we had. We had to use math. I don't mind the kids. The kids are fine. I, I get it. They're f I love them. They're great. Some of the staff I work with, I can't stand. I can't stand. So I'm going to tell you about what happened to me last year because I still can't get over it. You know, it's been rough teaching, you know, with COVID. And then one year we were all online. So last year I wanted to get off to a good start. So I was at the grocery store. I bought donuts. They were on sale. I brought donuts to school. 
You know what I mean? I put them in the teacher's lounge. I got on the email. I had, I'm a comic, so I'm going to have fun. Light fun. Work fun, right? So I'm like, hey, guys, I made don't. I didn't make them. I'm like, I made donuts. <laughs> and most people didn't care. Some people thought it was cute. But this one guy, this new teacher, who I hadn't even met up to that point, this Josh guy, he felt the need to reply back all. He didn't make the donuts. They're still in the box. That's all it said. I'm like, I know. That's, that, was the, that was the bit. <laughs> and I probably should have just let it go. But what I did instead was I just made donuts every week for the staff to really stick it to this Josh guy. Right? This joke cost me like 56 bucks, but I don't care. <laughs> Like, I was really leaning into it. Like, one Friday, I showed up, I had an apron on, I had some flour on my cheek. I'm like, hey, guys. I was up all night, tried a new recipe. They're still in the Dunkin' Donuts box. I didn't make, the, I didn't make these donuts. So it got so bad, I got called down to the principal's office. And he was like, Chris, you gotta stop bringing food to school. There's been a complaint. But this is what I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, he's got you in on the joke. Ooh, you're trying to mess with a comedian? Hmm, good luck. So here's what happened. Let me just read you the email. <clears throat> Bear with me, because I'm still trying to figure this out, and maybe some of you guys might be lawyers. <laughs> so again, joke. This is a joke, right? Clearly, it's a joke, unless he's diabetic. You know what I mean? This is clearly a joke. So here's the email I got from my principal. The subject is written reprimand. Oh, well, okay, we can type anything for a subject. <laughs> You're on my side, remember? <laughs> Dear Chris Schlichting, on October 13th, 2021, we met to discuss the complaint that had been brought against you by Josh Hahn. You were in, I probably should have said his name. <laughs> H-A-H-N, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> You were informed that the joke of bringing store-bought donuts to school and then claiming to be the baker <laughs> was becoming rather aggressive. <clears throat> it appeared that you had a hidden agenda against a fellow employee. I did, Josh. <laughs> you were asked to stop bringing food to share with the staff for the remainder of the year, and you agreed, and there were no issues for almost two months. Okay, here's what happened. Last paragraph, here's what happened. All right. <clears throat> we met again on January 5th, 2022, New Year, to discuss the incident that happened right before winter break on December 15th. You stated on record that after reading a work email for upcoming staff birthdays and noticing that Josh had a birthday that Thursday, <laughs> you guys know what happened, right? You guys... <laughs> This is real. <clears throat> you took it upon yourself to leave a single donut in Josh's mailbox as a birthday gift. This was a violation of what we had discussed back in October. And even though you did not claim to make this donut, never claimed to make this donut, there's my loophole. Right? Evidence B. <laughs> Exhibit B, right there. <clears throat> Your actions are now perceived as bullying and threatening. This is a direct violation. This is why I got scared. This is a direct violation of Administrative Behavior Section 4. Section 4. Section 4 already gets to the donut problem that may happen at your school. What book is this? Like, what, what book is this? Section 4? They're getting to it early. <clears throat> So I'm starting to panic a little bit. Uh, this is only a written write-up. Please know that if any other violation occurs, additional disciplinary action will be taken. A copy of this reprimand will be placed in your permanent personal file. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. I was like, I have a question for you, sir. <laughs> you think this is over? You think this is over? <laughs> you think this joke has gotten, no, 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 no. I'm the comedian here, right? This is clearly an elaborate joke, right? So what happened was I would still see Josh in the hallway because this was like winter, right? I still had spring and summer, right? So I would see him in the hallway and still thinking we were in joke mode, I would threaten him. I would threaten him, right? 
But not like a traditional threat, like a throat slash. I'd be like, <laughs> 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 Now, some of you guys might be like, Chris, that's not how you make donuts. I know, I didn't make the donuts. <laughs> this is what I'm dealing with. You're laughing, but I got suspended for two weeks with pay, so who won? Uh, <laughs> and we had, to, when I came back, we had to have a sit down meeting and talk about my bullying behavior, right? <laughs> and it went fine, we're good now, but how awesome would it have been? if I brought a snack to get the thing yeah. Oh my God, if I just showed up, I'm like, guys, it's my birthday, so I think this is allowed. I didn't read section four, but uh, that's what I'm dealing with, man. Now, the comedy is the dream. The teaching is like the side gig. It should be reversed, but that's how much I love comedy. Uh, but I have some other things that, if this doesn't work out, I have some other ideas. Business ventures. Not a joke. This is not a joke section of the show. I'm just gonna do my pitch. This is a great opportunity. And if, you're, in, if you, you're intrigued, come talk to me after the show. Simple, simple experiment here. <clears throat> so I took my daughter a long time ago to this birthday party at this place called Build-A-Bear. You guys heard of this place? <laughs> the concept is simple. The kids, they come in and they build their toy. They build the bear. They learn valuable lessons like, I don't know, how to cut out the middleman. I don't know, but kids love this store. <laughs> so I have an idea. I'm gonna get a store similar to Build-A-Bear, right? And I'm gonna call it, you ready? You ready, sir? All right. <laughs> I'm gonna call this store Catch and Dress a Squirrel. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hear my pitch, I'm not done. In this store, I got like 30 or 40 wild squirrels just running around, all right? <laughs> Woo, a tail got me. <laughs> and you have fun, bring your kid, you pay a small fee, and I'll give you like a bucket and a stick, all right? <laughs> And you go get one. Get him in the bucket. Trap him. Have fun. Bond with your kid. That's phase one. Get him in the bucket. Fair warning, though, they hate buckets. Phase two <laughs> is you bring him up to me at the counter and listen to this. I got a bunch of outfits. Little squirrel outfits. I got, like, astronaut squirrel, basketball playing squirrel, French maid squirrel for the fellas. I don't know. I got it all. I don't judge. But this is the part where I lose investors. Squirrels, I don't know if you knew this, ma'am, they just don't willingly like, mm -hmm, put on a jean jacket. <laughs> they don't, you know. <laughs> so I gotta find a way to calm them down, relax them, don't worry, the kids don't see this. I take the squirrel in back and you know, I punch it in the face, I knock it out, and then they're much easier to get dressed, right? And then I bring them out to him, like, here you go, here's uh, Elvis Presley squirrel, uh huh. <laughs> That's the best Elvis squirrel you've ever seen. You've ever seen. I'm gonna put it out there. But for legal reasons, I do have to issue the fallen warning. Eventually, this hunk of burning love, he will wake up. And if you thought he was mad before when he was in the bucket, you wait till he wakes up and he's got sideburns stapled to his face. The glue doesn't work, some with the fur. I can sense kind of a divide in the room. Well, guess what? Whether you're on board or not, the process has already started. Back home, I've already released 14, 15 squirrels back in the wild, fully dressed. To get people talking, it's called advertisement. And you guys think I'm being a jerk. I'm actually helping the squirrel image because how many times have you hit a squirrel with your car? You're like, big deal, dumb squirrel, high five. Uh. But good luck sleeping at night knowing you just hit Abraham Lincoln squirrel. He freed the black squirrels. Squirrels in the bird feeder. We hate that, right, honey? Damn squirrels in the bird feeder again. Oh, wait. He's got a police uniform on. Uh, he's probably got a warrant. Carry on, sir. I didn't see your handcuffs on your little belt. Cute little belt. <laughs> Come talk to me after the show. Bring your checkbooks. Uh, <laughs> 
Comedy is the dream, though. That's why. This is a big. This is cool. This is a really big deal for me. But that's what I want to do. And the thing I love best about comedy is meeting people, like on the road when you travel and stuff. I like that. I was recently doing a show in Des Moines, Iowa. I'm not trying to brag. It's the capital. Uh, <laughs> but I stopped at a gas station to get a cup of coffee, and I'm waiting in line. And the lady in front of me did not know this lady. She bought my coffee, and all she said to me was, "Pay it forward. You pay this forward, young man. You." And I know what to say, and then finally I spoke up. I was like, I also need gas. Is that part of the deal? Like, no, no. <laughs> Ruined her day. <laughs> I'm a coffee guy. I like coffee. We get coffee fans out there. I like coffee. I don't like, I, tell, I don't like the Starbucks, though. Too corporate. Too corporate, right? They have their own system, the Vente, Tall, Grande. I don't use it. I'm not going to be controlled by a corporation. <laughs> And I have my own system. It's easy to figure out. If I ever happen to go to a Starbucks, I'll use my system. I'll be like, can I get a hazelnut latte? And when they're like, what size do you want? What size do you want? I'm like, just give me a Papa Bear. Give me one Papa Bear hazelnut latte, please. Yeah, just give me the Papa Bear. Yeah, give me the Papa Bear. Give me the Papa. It's ironic, though, because one time I took a sip of the Papa Bear, way too hot. Good, couple of readers in here, nice. Uh, that's the cutest joke I've ever written. Like, that was my closer. Now I gotta keep going. Whenever I do travel, this is kind of weird, but I look for spooky things. Like ghosts, real stuff. Not the fake stuff, I like the real ghosts. Like a lot of comics when they travel, they try to get laid or like score drugs. I look for ghosts. Like I'm not gonna lie, the drugs help, but I like ghosts. <laughs> I just got done reading this book on actual haunted places in the Midwest. It's got like churches, mansions, cemeteries, right? But this is weird. According to this book, in West Union, Iowa, there's a haunted Hardee's. <laughs> Not the traditional haunt, right? But I'm thinking maybe Hardee's should take advantage of that. Maybe tweak their slogan around a little bit. Like, hello, welcome to Hardee's. We have food. You know that. But now we have a ghost. Finally. Two reasons to poop your pants. Because <laughs> the food's not good there. <laughs> and then this never fails. You know my go-to restaurant? Wherever I go, I just always go to a subway. Like, I know these. I can stay here and catch my breath for a little bit, all right? I have one impression for you guys. I don't do a lot of impressions. This is my impression of somebody who works at Subway when you ask for a little mayonnaise. Hold on, wait, ma'am. Somebody that works at Subway when you ask for a little mayonnaise. You're gonna get mayonnaise, people. I figured out how to get a little mayonnaise at Subway. You asked for no mayonnaise. You're still gonna get a little squirt. <laughs> like, I don't want any mayonnaise on my sandwich, please. Let's do it, try to squeak it in there. <laughs> they put a lot of mayonnaise on their sandwiches. This is no joke. I was at a Subway maybe a month ago and I ordered my sandwich and it was a young kid working the counter. I'm like, look, buddy, I don't want any mayonnaise. Just, I want my sandwich, no mayonnaise. And he was like, I was like, no, no. I had to reach around the sneeze guard, no. And I swear to you, he turned around to a camera behind him. mad at first, but then I looked at my sandwich, spelled in the mayonnaise, it said, help me, something's going on. <laughs> I 
I love to perform. I think it stems from an early age. For instance, when I was in the third grade, we had show and tell every Tuesday, and that was a chance for me to kind of get up in front of the class. Uh, but here's the thing, guys. I grew up poor, so I never really had anything good. Like, I remember one Tuesday, I was like, hello, everybody, my name's Chris. Here are some acorns. <laughs> There's seven of them. One doesn't have a hat on. <laughs> Yeah, and right there. That's the same reaction I got in the classroom. <laughs> when I, did you feel that? Oh my gosh. And we had a kid in my class, we'll just call him Kevin Barnes, and he had a geode rock. You ever see one of those things? Oh, they're mystical. They're, they look like diamonds, they're beautiful. And he would bring that stupid rock every Tuesday. Like I was being original. Like I remember one Tuesday, I brought a snakeskin. Are you listening? I brought a snakeskin. <laughs> I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, we all know what snakes are, but did you know they wore coats? <laughs> they don't have arms. <laughs> and it got quiet in the class. And I heard someone in the back, they were like, is, is Kevin gonna bring that rock? I'm like, shut up, Philip, why won't you die? <laughs> <laughs> and it got so bad that one Tuesday, I'm like, I'm done. I can't compete with Kevin, that stupid rock. And I remember the teacher was going around the classroom, right? And I was like, nope, not today. But as she got close, I'm like, Chris, you'd love to perform. You'd love to perform. But I didn't bring anything. So this is what I came up with, you guys. I tore out a piece of paper, and I started to fold it, because I was going to do one of those origami cranes. But as I'm folding it, that's when I realized, those are hard. If you've never done an origami crane, I don't know why I just thought I could master origami. So finally she calls me and I'm like, hey everybody, what's up? <laughs> Chris Lightning here, snakeskin guy from last Tuesday. <laughs> Here's a piece of paper. <laughs> but here's the thing, you guys. Everybody went nuts. They were clapping for me. They were cheering. It was the best day of my life. I don't know why, but I was loving it. It was great. And then I remember as I walked back to my desk, I see Kevin. You can be Kevin, all right? He was mad. Oh, he was holding his rock. He's like, Ugh. And that's when I figured it out. I got real close to Kevin, and I whispered in his ear, paper beats rock. <laughs> Think about calling my album In Your Face, Kevin. I don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm a married man. Uh, I have a ring. I just can't wear it, though, because it irritates my life. <laughs> Sorry, she's not here. She thinks I'm getting milk. We're okay, all right? <laughs> we have rings. We just don't wear them. We're fine, okay? So don't worry about me. But my wife, she's got a lot of tattoos. And she suggested this one. She was like, we should get tattoos on our ring finger. Have you guys ever heard of that? And I don't have any tattoos, and I don't want any tattoos, but I probably should have came up with a better response than, uh, that's a little permanent, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I know, I was there, I know. <laughs> we had a traditional Catholic wedding. We got married in Vegas <laughs> on a pirate ship at Treasure Island Casino and Resort. This is true. And recently we got into a little argument. It happens. And she dropped this bad boy on me. She was like, I don't even think you took our wedding vows seriously. I was like, what, what? Are these the same vows where you had a plastic parrot on your shoulder? And I wore an eye patch? And instead of saying I do, we said, yar, are these the same vows? Cause that was very serious, me matey. I'm currently in the doghouse because the stove is broken. And my wife was like, you need to fix this stove before you go. You need to fix this stove. I don't know why I'm suddenly qualified to fix a stove. Like, I was a theater major in college. All I know is how to be the stove. I'm preheating. And seen. Some of you guys are like, when they get a stove up there, it's me. I was acting. 
when they get a stove up on stage, how they get it up on stage? It was me, guys. Hello. It was me acting. <laughs> so we and my wife, we've been together. We've been married for 13 years. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Not in a row, but still, that's pretty good. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, but we had a nice, for our 13th year anniversary, we did something fun, went to Chicago, we had a nice little getaway, had a nice dinner, went shopping, the usual stuff, right? We drove home that night, and I got pulled over, right? And the cop told me I had a headlight out. I'm like, okay, sir, I'll take care of this. But then he told me to step out of the car, which I thought was weird. Like, I hadn't been drinking or anything, but still, it's the middle of the night, I was a little nervous, so I'm like, honey, film this, just in case. I don't know. <laughs> so the cop pulled me aside, and he's like, I noticed that your belt was undone. Were you and your wife having a little fun? Now, I wanted to say something other than the truth. Like, I wanted to say, officer, what can I say? She can't keep her hands off me. Even when we're driving, she has to be up on me. If there's a law for being too sexy, you're going to have to arrest me right now. That's what I wanted to say. A way better answer than the truth, what I actually had to tell this other human being. <clears throat> Look, sir. Sometimes when I've been driving, long distances, my belly fat, it rolls over my belt buckle, and it hurts. Stop filming. Yeah, he let me go. At least I think he did. He was laughing. I just left. I probably have a warrant. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we got kids. And I think uh, the toughest part about raising baby goats is the money. It's not, <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got him. He's like, that was not bad. That was not bad. The guy has a whole skeleton tattooed on his arm. And he just laughed at my baby goat joke. <laughs> Someone escort me out to the parking lot after the show. <laughs> Is there a back way here? <laughs> uh, so I have human kids. <laughs> I have human kids. And I don't want to offend anybody that's a parent. You guys got kids? Are you guys together? Oh, you got kids? Yeah, so I don't want to offend you or anyone else. We didn't plan our pregnancy. And when you have an unplanned pregnancy, this is the only comparison I have. It's sort of like getting the wrong soda at a vending machine. No, hear me out. First time dad. First time dad. Everything's going perfect in your life, right? And you love Dr. Pepper. And you find a vending machine, you got the exact change. Everything's going perfect in your life, but you're not paying attention. You're not careful. Maybe you're drunk. And you hit the wrong button, and a fresca comes out. Now, you know what a fresca is, but you're not ready in your life for a fresca and you can't take the fresca and put it back up the vending machine. I tried, it's weird. <laughs> it's like that, actually. Nah, no, 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 that's not scary enough. That doesn't do it justice. Same situation, but instead of that fresca just falling to the slot as they traditionally do for some unplanned, some scary reason, the fresca shoots out of the slot and hits you right in the crotch. I think it's more accurate to the pain and confusion I was feeling at the time, but wait people, for me it goes on. Same situation, but while I'm on my knees holding my crotch, I go, wow, this is gonna change everything. Another fresca, <laughs> which I didn't pay for, and I even knew existed, shoots out of the slot, hits me right in my face. You guys with me? Yeah. Twins! Yeah. I'll prove it, they're out in the car, I'll go grab them. <laughs> Instant family when you have twins. Instant family. One day, I'm smoking weed out of an apple. <laughs> Yeah, and the next, I'm smoking weed out of an apple in the garage, because now we have rules and regulations. <laughs> All right, this has been really fun. Uh, the good thing I love, I do in comedy, it's one of my favorite things. It's always like, actually up here is where I feel the most comfortable, which is really weird if you think about it. But I love performing. And I almost feel like I have a little bit of a, a legacy to keep in mind because I mentioned my twin boys, they're 13, and guess what? They're dabbling in comedy too. They want to follow in their dad's footsteps, which is flattering, but they need to work on some of their material. You know what I mean? Like, uh, in fact, they've already started doing some bits. We got a phone call from my boy's principal the first week of school. 
Apparently, my son was doing a comedy show in the cafeteria. Oh. I'm like, what? This is incredible. How much were tickets? <laughs> but my principal's like, no, uh uh. And I quote, he's like, your son, Thomas, he took a french fry and pretended that it was his wiener. <laughs> And I'm trying to laugh because that's kind of good. Uh, and he also said wiener. This is a professional with a suit and tie, and he went with wiener. So I'm like dying. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like okay, I'll take care of it, sir. So we get home. My wife is devastated. I'm like, I'll take care of this. It's kind of my fault. I'll take care of it. So I take Tommy to his room. We shut the door, and I'm like, Thomas, you don't want to be a prop comic. That's no way to go. <laughs> You gotta tote your luggage around everywhere you perform, like carrot top. No. If anything, have like a tag. A tag is where you strengthen a joke. So I'm like, Tommy, keep the French fry bit, but maybe have like a French accent. Be like, bonjour, wee oui, wee, oui, and then point to your French fry. You know, like. And I think the initial thing, whenever you have kids, you just wanna keep them safe, right? That's like the initial uh, response. Just keep things out of their mouth. Don't let them put their fingers in sockets, right? Just keep them safe. But every time you get like a scare, it's like really shocking. We also have a daughter. Uh, I have a daughter named Ruby. She's incredible. I don't have a lot of material on her because she's like perfect. But I had a scary incident with her. When she was seven years old, she twisted her knee on the trampoline and she was like screaming. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So I took her to the emergency room and it was so cute. The nurse came out and asked her if she was allergic to anything. I'm like, no, she's not. But my seven-year-old daughter, Ruby, tugged me on the sleeve and was like, dad, dad. I'm allergic to guinea pigs. <laughs> I just thought it was cute. But here's what's weird, you guys. The nurse wrote it down. Like, I'm not a doctor, and I don't know, I don't know how medicine works, but I like to envision there was another nurse like on her way out with like two, like two little pet carriers. Like, oh, she is allergic? OK, I'll just take <laughs> She did say she was allergic. Okay. What did she say? She did say she was allergic. Okay. All right. And she did. Okay. All right. Not a problem. Sure. I'll just take Dr. Whiskers and Dr. Butterscotch back. Dr. Butterscotch, cancel her tea time. It's just a funny scenario, right? But it's also kind of scary. Has anybody ever had a surgery we had to be put under for a little bit? It's, it's nerve wracking. I can't imagine a scenario where you're in the surgery room and the anesthesiologist is like, count backwards from 100, you're like 100, 99, 98, 97. <laughs> and a guinea pig walks into the room. <laughs> Your immediate reaction is like, oh, because they're cute, right? But then when you've noticed he's like scrubbed in, that's gotta be the worst. Like, no! That's gotta be the worst roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> I feel like I went too far with that. Like, uh, then you wake up from surgery and the doctor's like, he's got his back to you, he's checking the charts. And you're like, oh, doc, I had the weirdest dream. <laughs> I had the weirdest dream that a guinea pig did my operation. And the doctor's like. I did do this. I don't know. He's, I don't know. Is, is he talk? I don't know. You guys are all. I don't know what a guinea pig sounds like. I, I admit I did not do research on that joke. <laughs> oh, man. Twins. Man, the twins are crazy. Like, I'm just. Ugh. And I'm torn always between being a, a dad and a comedian. You know what I mean? So I'm always kind of like messing with them, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Me and my son Thomas, we were, at, we were in Arizona. We were at like some park. And he was like, Dad, why does that lady have an umbrella? It's not raining. And I explained to him it's to protect her from the sun's rays, right? The sun can be dangerous. And he turned to me, he's like, oh, she's a vampire? <laughs> <laughs> and what I should have said was, no, vampires aren't real. But instead I went with, run! <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny therapy twice a week uh, <laughs> my other son Jonas we were swimming once and he came up to me he's like dad how come your stomach doesn't look like mine 
how come you don't have a six pack like I do? I was like, Jonas, how come you don't have an Xbox? And he's like, Dad, I do, I, I do. I'm like, not anymore, because that was a rude question. Go to your room! And no crunches. <laughs> I spent a lot of time hanging out with the kids. It's hard to make friends at my age when you're 40. It's hard to make friends until tonight. Right, guys? are all... All right. No, edit that out. That wasn't sincere. Uh, it's hard to make friends when you're older. Most of your friends are the grade school friends, the high school friends. Uh, so what I started to do recently is we started to buy our friends. We got a lot of fur babies. We got a lot of animals, all right? The one thing I don't like, though, is we have a cat. I'm not a big fan of my cat. It, like, scratches and claws the furniture. My wife brought this cat home, and it scratches the furniture. But my wife was like, you know you can get a little mist bottle, and you can give it a little squirt. I'm like, whoa, you're giving me permission to shoot this cat with a squirt gun? So I went online and got a Super Soaker Mega Blaster 9000. It's got like a water backup tank. I can actually hold this cat up against the wall with the pressure of this gun. It works though, it works. When she came out of that coma, she didn't go anywhere near the couch. So another thing I hate about this cat too, is we've had this cat for eight years. It just suddenly stopped going in the litter box. It's always gone in the litter box. I'm like, this is not good. So we took it to the vet, and the vet said, everything's fine. Sometimes cats do this to get attention. I'm like, so he's, my cat's just being diagnosed with being a jerk? <laughs> like, it's just such a weird thing. I don't like this cat. But this is crazy, and it's gonna happen. I was driving home from work, and in my street was a dead cat. And sure enough, I got a little closer, and it was my cat. So part of me is like, yes, good riddance. <clears throat> but another part of me was like, my kids are gonna be home, and I don't want them to have to see this, so I stepped it up as a dad. You would have done the same thing, right? So I got the cat in a little bag that I found in my car, and I walked it up to my driveway, but now I don't know what to do. I have a cat in a bag. What's the protocol? Like, is there a special sticker that you put on the bag? So I, I buried it. It's reasonable. I buried it in the backyard, but now I'm at a gravesite. No I'm emotional. So I'm like, uh... <laughs> Georgina, you were a good cat. I'm sorry I didn't get to know you better. I'm not even sure if your name was Georgina, but thanks for always being there for the late nights and hanging with the kids. And so I'm like emotional. I don't want to see an animal get hurt or die, so I'm emotional. It's a rough day. So I get inside, and in my living room, on my couch, is my cat. <laughs> yeah, apparently in my neighborhood, there is more than one calico cat. And I don't want to sound racist, but they all look alike to me. So now what do you do? I think you would have done the same thing. I unburied the cat. This is evidence now, guys. Uh, and I put it, I like put it, I like Shawshanked it. I didn't have it down my pants, but like I put the cat. <laughs> Silver lining to this story? Ever since that day, Georgina has been the most well-behaved cat. I think she was watching from the window. Like, oh crap, he means business. She'll actually scoop her own litter and walk it to the toilet. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Worked out pretty good. My favorite, real quick, I have, uh, we have a dog. We have a pug puppy. Oh my God. This thing is awesome. Now, we already have two dogs, but me and my wife are like, you know what we need? We need a dog that sounds like he has asthma all the time. And that's what we got with little Ernie, right? He's like, ah, I'm like, are you okay? Where's your inhaler? You know what I mean? He's constantly out of breath. And we're in the process of training him, which isn't going well. We're trying to teach him all these things. It's hard to get mad at him because he's so cute. He'll like poop in the kitchen. I'm like, Ernie, no, no. And he's like, I'm like, get out of here, you rag scamp. Walking through the poop. Oh, what a rascal. But I want to treat my baby right, right? So I went to the grocery store, my little prince, and I want to get him a toy. So I was like, this is how much I love him. I'm squeaking all the toys. I want, I want that fine squeak. That hot, that hot dog is way too loud for little Ernie's ears. Too loud, too abrasive. So I'm squeaking all the toys, like an adult. And somebody behind me is like, hey, you want to try them out? You got to put them in your mouth. <laughs> Funny, right? I'm like, oh my God, that was good. Possible new friend, human friend. Human, say something, you're a comedian, say something. Say something clever, so he'll invite you over to hang out. Say something. So this is what I went with, I'm like, yeah. And then after that, maybe I could smell your butt, because we're dogs, I, I thought we were dogs in that scenario. I blew it. <laughs> we had a scare too, because 
my wife was home with the dogs and she let Ernie out in the backyard and she called me. She's like, I can't find Ernie. I don't know where he is. So I got home and I looked in the backyard. And I was like, Ernie, where are you? Here's the weird thing. I could hear him. I couldn't see him. I'm like, is he in like, do we have a well in our backyard or is he in a ditch? I'm like, Ernie! And then we get a call from our neighbor. She's like, I don't know if you know this, but your dog is up on your roof. <laughs> Apparently Ernie found a way to get up on the back deck and then get up on our roof, right? So me and my wife are on the ground level trying to get Ernie to, st like, we have a two-story house, not trying to brag, but we're like way down. I'm like, Ernie, don't jump! No, this is the same dog that doesn't sit or stay. We didn't cover, don't jump, all right? So my wife's like distracting him. <laughs> <laughs> and I sneak out on the roof and I grab him and I bring him inside. We, that was a crazy incident. My wife is hysterical. She's like, this dog is so stupid. We can't do this. Like, I, go, I, I, I beg to differ. I think this dog is incredibly intelligent. I think he's very smart. Because I went out there. I was, I was looking for him. I was like, Ernie, Ernie, where are you? And he was telling me. He was like, roof. <laughs> roof. <laughs> roof. But I'm like the first one of my friends to have kids, so now they're calling me because they're having kids now. <laughs> my buddy, you know what I'm talking about? My buddy just called me out in California because he just had a baby. And we were just making chit chat. I'm like, oh, did you ever do that thing where you play music up to the stomach? Like when my wife was pregnant, we'd play like a CD player of lullabies. I don't know if you've heard of that, but. My buddy was like, oh yeah, we did that. We did that. Nothing but classic rock and roll, classic rock. <laughs> I'm like, did you notice anything when your baby was born? He's like, oh yeah. First time my son ever cried, he was like, ah! <laughs> If you don't get that joke, <laughs> Google Led Zeppelin. They're a promising young man. They've got a lot of potential. You guys have been awesome. This means a lot to me. Thank you, guys.